We are honored to have a leader and a custodian of democracy amongst us. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Prime Minister of the Hellenic Republic, Mr. Kyriakos Mitsotakis, in a keynote conversation with Stephen Erlanger, Chief Diplomatic Correspondent of the New York Times. I guess we're waiting for photographers. Thank you, Achilles. Uh, thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. It's a great pleasure to have you here. Thank you for honoring the forum with your presence. So for the people who've been brave enough to be in the room with us and those watching, um, a very good morning to you. We have half an hour, and I, I want to get to a bunch of topics. So um, I'm going to skip uh, a lot of the politenesses. Um, Start with the deal you just did with Emmanuel Macron. Um, you're buying frigates and planes from the French. There's talk of an alliance, of, a, of some kind of alliance. But what are the French committed to do other than sell you stuff? We did sign with President Macron a strategic uh, partnership uh, agreement, uh, which uh, essentially uh, confirms the fact that uh, we have a longstanding um, uh, strategic partnership uh, with uh, France, which essentially goes back uh, centuries. I shouldn't forget that uh, this partnership was signed uh, uh, on the 200th uh, anniversary of the beginning of the War of Independence, uh, and the French were one of the three powers who helped us establish the model. Well, that was then. And uh, the, the, modern, the modern Greek uh, uh, state. But uh, to get to your point, there's an article uh, in the treaty that was signed, um, uh, which is a mutual uh, uh, assistance um, um, clause, which uh, essentially th says that if any of the two countries is, is attacked, if its uh, territory is, uh, 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 is, is challenged, if sovereignty is challenged, then there is an obligation by the other party um, uh, to, to assist it. Uh, and uh, this is a strategic partnership, which uh, in, in my mind goes I would say probably above uh, and beyond um, uh, the mutual assistance clauses that are currently uh, included in the European oh. treaties. Oh. In the sense that the, you know, the phrasing is probably um, uh, slightly stronger, but it also uh, signifies the importance that France assigns to the broader region of the Eastern mm -hmm. Mediterranean. France uh, stood by Greece uh, during the difficult summer of 20, right. uh, 2020. Uh, they well, made their intentions uh, what very, do you very clear. Say when people say this is just your payback for that. Mm, I'd say that uh, we are we were in the market to purchase new surface um, uh, ships. Mm -hmm. um, I think we struck a good deal. Mm -hmm. uh, the French frigates were the ones that were actually recommended by our navy. Our navy considered this to be the best right. uh, the best option. So I would say we bought the best ships uh, at the best price with a very quick delivery schedule. And on top of that we negotiated what I think is a mutually beneficial strategic partnership agreement. How much do you think that the price and, and, and the urgency was affected by uh, Emmanuel Macron's re-election campaign? He's up for election in April. Look, we, were, um, we were the buyers. And I need to point out that Greece uh, had not invested in its navy for uh, almost 20 years in terms of new surface ships. Uh, and we purchased a ship that will uh, usher the navy into uh, a new uh, digital era uh, and a ship that will give us a very strong deterrence capability for the next uh, uh, for the next decades, uh, and uh, we have an obligation um, uh, to make sure that we have the capacity to uh, defend ourselves. But at the same time, within the context of NATO, we are adding resources to our transatlantic uh, alliance. There's a lot of talk, as you know, in Europe about the interoperability. Uh, of our defense capabilities. Well, we're taking a step in that, uh, in that direction. I think the stronger the European pillar of NATO is, uh, the stronger NATO is as an alliance. You had this discussion sure. with, our, with our American partners. They've been pushing us, not Greece, because we're spending a lot on defense, but other European partners to get our act together when it comes to defense. Well, it's a step in the right direction. Right. Just don't buy French diesel-powered submarines, because that could get you into trouble with uh, well, for, uh, uh, for <laughs> the moment, we have purchased uh, German submarines, <laughs> and we're quite, uh, uh, quite happy with, with, uh, with, with that them. purchase. So, I mean, why, in the context of a NATO alliance, do you need another alliance? 
aren't you supposed to be allies anyway? No, no, I uh, mean, what does Article 5 mean if it doesn't mean exactly what you said this alliance is supposed to say, which is that there, if that people come to the aid of, 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 of member countries whose territory is threatened. That's what Article 5 is about. So why do you need something else? Well, I'll be very open with you, um, uh, Stephen. Does Article apply, 5 uh, apply in the case of an attack by, an, uh, by, uh, a, NATO by, 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 by a NATO member? Yeah. I'm not sure. Okay. NATO has never been very clear on that issue. My obligation is to defend my country okay. and to form uh, the necessary uh, uh, alliances uh, over and above the security arrangements that we already have. Now, on your topic, do we need a separate alliance within NATO? I would argue that Europe, uh, as a continent, needs to align its economic strength with its geopolitical ambitions. And yes, there may be missions uh, that are of particular European interest in the Sahel, uh, in the Middle East, in the Eastern Mediterranean, where NATO may not want to be uh, involved. Uh, so I see these two initiatives as fully Mm -hmm. complementary, but also as a very clear statement uh, by, uh, by Europe, should we manage to get to that uh, mm -hmm. uh, point, that we're willing um, uh, and able uh, to take initiatives even uh, without the approval of NATO. That would mean to be very open sure. without the approval of the United States. Sure. But, but the United States is also one of your best allies in the Eastern Eastern, Eastern Mediterranean, so. But that is true. And so, I, it, so what's the anxiety? I don't quite understand. Uh, first of all, there is no quote unquote anxiety. Uh, we are uh, a country that after a decade uh, of uh, severe economic uh, crisis now has the ability to reinvest uh, in our uh, armed forces. Uh, we have a strategic partnership uh, with the United States that is going from strength to strength. We're about to sign, uh, if everything goes according to plan, a new five-year uh, mutual defense and cooperation agreement uh, with the United States. And uh, this, this partnership has a lot of value to us, and I think it also has a lot of value uh, to, to the United States. But again, it seems to me yes. that uh, we, NATO, uh, uh, both uh, Greece, France and the United States are NATO members, so there is no real competition here. We're talking about complementary initiatives. So, I mean, would you regard this as NATO not being quite as brain dead as Mr. Macron thinks? I never, I never believed that NATO was, uh, was brain uh, dead, but I do believe that uh, NATO, through its 2030 uh, initiative, needs to, to rethink its uh, priorities. It is, it is still... Uh, the most successful uh, alliance uh, in the history uh, of the world, and we're very proud and active members of NATO. Yes. I mean, some people will say domestically, you, you, you already, according to NATO figures, spend 2.58% of GDP on defense, which is quite high in NATO terms. It's certainly above mm -hmm. what NATO asks for. Turkey, of course, spends 2.72% of GDP, and it's a bigger country, so I'm not saying it's, un, it's un, unjustified. But what I'm asking is, given the inequalities in Greece, which are real in, in every country, but perhaps have been magnified by COVID, um, given health crisis, given the environmental crisis, the big fires this summer, um, what, what do you say to people who say, well, you know, frankly, this money could be better spent, that Turkey isn't quite the imminent threat that some people think, and that you have o other demands for this money? Well, I think it's a very fair question. I would answer that uh, these are long-term defense contracts uh, spread over many years, uh, over a decade, uh, if you look at the repayment schedules, uh, that were fully in line with our fiscal commitments, uh, and that these, uh, these investments uh, are not at the expense of our other priorities. You're very right to point out that as the economy is again uh, um, uh, recovering and as we move, uh, if I were to borrow, you know, the, the, uh, the theme of the conference from uh, resilience to renewal, my number one priority is um, how do we reduce uh, inequalities in this new growth model I'm championing um, uh, for, um, uh, for Greece. At the, at the same time, uh, we cannot ignore the fact that we live in a very complicated uh, neighborhood. It is a reality uh, of, uh, of geography which uh, uh, we cannot ignore. I do not intend to enter into an arms race 
with Turkey. Mm -hmm. And I'm always reaching out a hand of friendship uh, to Turkey. We have big differences uh, on, on many issues, uh, but uh, there should be a way uh, to solve these uh, differences uh, through dialogue. At the same time, we will defend our territory, sure. uh, our territorial integrity, our sovereignty, our sovereign rights, and, and, in order to, and in order to do so, we need a strong deterrence uh, capability. And your territorial waters, which are extensive. Uh, indeed, yes. uh, hence, uh, and we should hence not forget Greece. Histor <laughs> historically, I mean, we are, this is the, um, you know, the Athens Democracy uh, Forum, and we should not forget uh, that uh, Athens, uh, ancient Athens, I mean the cradle of democracy, was uh, a very strong uh, naval power and that the battle essentially uh, that uh, <laughs> uh, was at the foundation of the, of the miracle of the fifth century of classical Athens was a naval battle. The battle of Salamis actually last year was celebrated 2,500 years. So this is a country with a very strong naval tradition. Okay, well, let's not have another one. No, we don't need okay. to, uh, but that's, uh, you know, that, the, the, um, uh, uh, that is exactly the purpose of having a strong deterrence capability. Right. But um, one of the interesting things, of course, is the migration question. Now, obviously, Greece, Italy, I mean, you've suffered a lot. I mean, you're closest to, to all to all the migratory flows and it creates domestic issues and problems and the rest of Europe has not been terribly generous since 2015 certainly in kind of distributing mm -hmm. people so the charges are of course that you're actively with Frontex pushing people back toward Turkey there was a period where Turkey was alleged to be instrumentalizing migrants and pushing them outward. That doesn't seem to happen now. Um, but what do you, I mean, obviously you can defend your territory that's reasonable and so on. But what about the charges that you're being a little too aggressive um, and, and, and that you're violating the spirit of humanitarian refugee law? I am unapologetic about uh, defending our borders. We should not forget that back in uh, 2020, in March 2020, uh, Turkey instrumentalized the migration uh, issue and actively encouraged and facilitated tens of thousands of people to try to cross uh, into Greece. We said no, we defended our land border. Um, we are defending our sea border, but we're doing it with full respect um, uh, to human rights, putting the protection of people um, uh, at sea uh, always as a first priority. Uh, no one has drowned in the Aegean this year, and I'm particularly proud of the work that my Coast Guard uh, is doing in saving people uh, at, uh, at risk. At the same time, uh, on the humanitarian side, since we took over, we addressed the problem of unaccompanied minors. Uh, a, a horrible story, really, of um, uh, literally young boys and, uh, and girls um, frequently abused uh, in, our, in our facilities. We've set up new facilities. I will be going to Samos tomorrow to uh, inaugurate a new state-of-the-art um, facility that offers uh, people um, uh, who arrive on Samos and whose applications are still being processed uh, access to high-quality um, uh, facilities. Uh, we've granted asylum to tens of thousands of people uh, who are entitled asylum, and we're actively trying to integrate them uh, in, into Greek society. So I, 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 I can see, uh, I see no conflict between uh, vigilantly defending our borders and, yes, intercepting uh, uh, boats uh, at, uh, uh, at sea, while at the same time uh, uh, behaving in a, in a totally humanitarian uh, manner and taking care of those people uh, whose lives are at risk. Do you think Europe is going to help Further, I mean, it, okay, it helps you build new camps, mm -hmm. but it's not taking people. And how are you doing at sending people back who um, who actually do not qualify? Not so well, right? And then, how worried are you about new uh, chaos in Afghanistan, producing a kind of slower but persistent flow of? Um, asylum seekers, refugees, migrants? First of all, we have every interest in working with Turkey uh, to uh, contain uh, illegal flows of migrants and to eradicate uh, the smuggler networks that prey on vulnerable people. 
and uh, the fact that the number of people arriving on Greek islands has been reduced by almost 90% over two years, I think is an indication that we're actually breaking down that quote-unquote business um, uh, model. Uh, I think Turkey can do more uh, in this direction. Uh, they should be able to readmit, according to our agreement, uh, people whose uh, applications have been declined. Um, they're not doing it at present. That's, that's the point. They're not, do, they're not doing it How at, at present. How many people are we talking about? Well, uh, in, 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 I mean, right now we have close to 2,000 people we could return from, right. the, uh, from the islands, and I think it would be a very good indication by Turkey that they're actually looking to improve the level of cooperation between Europe, because this was a European agreement, uh, and Turkey on the issue of migration. Now, are we concerned about Afghanistan? Of course we are, uh, but I think there is a general understanding in Europe that we will not tolerate, we will not accept the uncontrolled uh, migratory uh, waves that we had to deal with in 2015. I, I, I have to say the language from Europe is, um, it's pretty ugly sometimes, I have to say. And yes, we're all in favor of human rights and values, but don't come, we will stop you. That's really but, the message. But, at, this, uh, but at, at, at the same time, there has been a lack of European solidarity. Yeah. The fact that we have not been able to agree on a common uh, migration and asylum pact is due to the fact that some countries uh, simply consider this not to be the problem at all, uh, placing all Mostly the burden northern countries, yeah, placing yeah. all the or eastern countries, right. uh, placing all the uh, all the burden uh, on frontline states, and this is unfair. This is not just a question of uh, uh, money. Right. Of course, we receive money uh, by Europe to build uh, our uh, facilities, but uh, we should really see more uh, solidarity. We should start by first of all having common asylum rules so as to avoid this phenomenon of, of, of asylum uh, uh, shopping. But yeah. I am not particularly optimistic that we will make significant progress on this file um, no, because, in I the mean, foreseeable it, future. It just feels like walls are becoming very popular. I mean, you've just built a sort of wall. The Turks are building a wall with Iran. Uh, when Orban built a wall, it was considered terrible, and then later on people thought, oh, well, no, no, it's okay, he's defending the Schengen borders. But so. uh, I, I think it was one of your colleagues, um, mm -hmm. uh, Tom Friedman, uh, yeah. who wrote an article about being able to build a big wall and also have a big gate. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, defending our borders is necessary, but what is the alternative? The alternative is organized uh, migration uh, in a manner that does not endanger people, and that actually serves their need. For example, we're in discussion with Egypt um, uh, to put together what I think is going to be a very innovative pilot program to cover our needs in the agricultural sector, where we simply do not have enough people to work in our fields. I think this is, would be a win-win solution, and it would send a signal that, yes, um, uh, we can accommodate people based on the rules that, that sure. we set, and this should not happen in an uncontrolled way. No, I mean, it's, it's just sometimes it's not for here, but. The whole refugee convention probably needs to be rethought. It's not World War II anymore. You're going to have climate migration. You're going to have all kinds mm -hmm. of different kinds of asylum seekers. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the, and the conventions aren't prepared for any of this. Yeah. And we should not forget that the people who arrive in Greece are leaving Turkey. Yep. And in Turkey, if they're in Turkey, they're not fleeing war and persecution. No. In Turkey. No, no, it's it's true, but one should also, I mean, this is not to argue with you, but I mean, I also respect Turkey for holding more than four million I've been very, I've been, refugees, I've been, asylum uh, seekers. I've been, very, very, I've been very open in yes. acknowledging the significant role that Turkey is playing uh, in managing the migration crisis, and that is why I urge uh, Europe to work with uh, Turkey constructively, but we both need to make sure that we keep our end of the bargain. And what is very, very clear is that what happened in March 2020 cannot and will not be repeated. Another topic, if I may. Um, you did a very good job in Greece with the first wave of vaccination and COVID, but you're now only at 55%, maybe 58%. I'm Slightly not sure. Yeah. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. I mean, I, um, it's an old figure, but it's stalled. Um, and part of it, as in my country, it's politicized. Uh, part of it's the church. Part of it's lots of things. So how do you explain this? Is, is this the residue of populism? Is this a deep anti-state mistrust? Is this the mistrust of authority? Is this disinformation from outside? 
How it's do you explain probably, all this? It's probably a little bit of everything. Certainly, vaccinations have been less politicized in Greece than, uh, in, <laughs> so. than in your country. Having said that, we have not had the full support of the opposition yeah. uh, when it comes to uh, vaccination. Very prominent uh, uh, opposition figures, ex-minister of, uh, of health, has practically been an anti-vaxxer. So we have not had the full support of the opposition. But there are also deep-rooted you know, uh, cultural um, uh, issues. Uh, if you look at rural areas, uh, they lag behind. Uh, the big cities. Uh, we're trying to um, explain and persuade people uh, that obviously vaccination uh, is the, the right thing to do and the only protection uh, they have against uh, the fourth wave of the pandemic. And if you look at the data, uh, we have around 300 people uh, in our intensive care um, units uh, as we speak. More than 90% are unvaccinated. So people who are not vaccinated are uh, uh, really, they, they really risk uh, um, getting seriously ill and possibly even um, uh, even dying. But we know uh, that we probably can push up, you know, our vaccination uh, uh, rates beyond where we are now. We're slightly below the EU average, right. so it's it's not a, it's it's. it's not uh, I'd, I'd say mm -hmm. I'd, I'd say we started we started very well, mm -hmm. uh, but we're we're bumping into the sort of resistance that many other uh, countries are facing. Having said that, but uh, there are is countries. Is there anything unique about? the resistance here. Is, no, I don't think there's asking. something particularly um, uh, uh, unique. Uh, I think uh, it's pretty, there's a combination of, uh, uh, of a sort of very strong anti-vax feelings that you see uh, everywhere with still some skepticism about the efficacy uh, of the um, uh, vaccines. Uh, or of course, what's there, in it. Of course, there are countries, and uh, you know, such as Portugal, which have done remarkably well. No. Uh, and uh, we we can do uh, better. We will not impose uh, additional, you know, sort of mandatory vaccinations. I have reached the conclusion that this would not be helpful. We will continue. Not even in healthcare. We've done it in healthcare. That's already. what I thought. Okay. Uh, but right. I want to make it very clear: right. if you are unvaccinated, you will not have access to entertainment. You will not have access to sports uh, uh, facilities, and you need to constantly test and pay for your own tests. And I think as we move indoors in October or November, where vaccinations are mandatory now in order to be able to access a restaurant, to access a restaurant, I think more people, especially young people, will think twice uh, about uh, getting vaccinated sure. because otherwise it will just be a big hassle. One of the things that Greece did early, which kind of upset Brussels a little bit, was you opened up to tourism very early. Um, and um, when Brussels was saying, uh, I mean, have you noticed, did, did it cause any spike that, that you noticed or not? Not no. really. Uh, yeah. I, I need to point out that we were the first, I was the first at the European Council last December to raise the issue of the EU digital uh, certificate. Mm -hmm. I told my colleagues then, I know it's gloomy, it's winter, it's dark, mm -hmm. but come summer, people will want to travel. So let's make sure we work on this early. And it was a big success. Uh, we have um, uh, this uh, digital certificate. Yeah, it's great, really, by the way. It really facilitated okay. travel. Our tourism did better than we expected. Mm -hmm. We opened to the American market uh, much earlier than many of our right. quote unquote competitors. We had 10 nonstop flights uh, into Athens daily from the US, and we're very, very happy that uh, U.S. Uh, tourists and visitors came to Greece. I think they had a great time. Uh, and we saw no real you know, spike in COVID uh, due to tourism. A couple other things. We don't have tons of time left. Um, North Macedonia and enlargement. Now, North Macedonia has been a, what would you say, a neurologic issue in Greece mm -hmm. for historical reasons. Do you support Bulgaria in its resistance to allowing accession to go ahead? Or is it something you just no. don't talk about? Or, no. or we don't oppose support. it? Right? We don't support Bulgaria. Okay. We think it's an unnecessary complication. Mm -hmm. We need, we're gonna be meeting in, in a couple of days uh, in, in Slovenia. We need to offer the, world, the Western Balkans a very clear mm -hmm. European perspective. We need to openly talk about enlargement. Mm -hmm. We need to send a signal that, you know, in 10, 15 years, mm -hmm. as long as it will take, but the Western Balkans belong in Europe, because this is vacuum, 
Uh, because if, if, if you know the vacuum is going play. to be if, if right. the vacuum is going to be occupied by uh, by other uh, players, which is already happening. Look, I was also very clear when it comes to Northern Macedonia. There were issues, um, aspects of the deal that was done by the previous government. I did not like. I did not vote for the deal, but I said very clearly that if the deal is ratified yeah, by Parliament, keep... I will respect it. Yes. It's an international obligation uh, of the country and a country that is a proponent of international law needs to respect international treaties. Right, because um, the Albanians, Eddie Rama is being very vocal these days about how absurd this is. Um, so I think people will be glad to um, hear what you've just said. Um, quickly now, I think German election, I mean, it's still up in the air, but you're gonna have whoever's the chancellor, it will be pro-European, It'll be pro-NATO, pro-transatlantic alliance. But it's not so clear what the position will be on uh, collective debt, on new forms of fiscal in integration, of whether one can be more flexible on fiscal rules. Um, what's your take so far? First of all, I know. I know both Olaf Scholz and Armin Laschet. I think we will work very well with... With whomever. With whoever. I right. mean, at the end of the day, it's up to the German parties to decide um, who, the, who the next chancellor uh, will be. Having said that, Germany made a big step, I think, in the right direction by accepting the, the concept uh, of a European debt instrument, mm -hmm. which was essentially behind the recovery fund. Mm -hmm. This is really big. It's an important moment in European integration. Greece will receive 32 billion euros. Uh, in funds, on, on, on top of the structural funds, to help turbocharge uh, our digital uh, and green uh, transformation. And that is why I'm very optimistic that we can sustain high growth rates for the next decade, uh, which will significantly be above the uh, Eurozone uh, average. Uh, uh, but on the question uh, of uh, the future of fiscal policy in Europe, I think we will have a very interesting discussion mm -hmm. regarding the future of the Stability Pact. Uh, we had that discussion with uh, Mario Draghi um, uh, um, uh, a week ago, mm -hmm. uh, and I think we agree on the principle that if we are to spend more on climate, and if we are also to spend more on defense because we want a geopolitical mm -hmm. uh, union, um, we need to incorporate these investments uh, into our thinking. You can't have uh, you know, your cake and eat it at the same time. You cannot have very stringent fiscal rules while at the same time expect to invest uh, in, in policies which will pay a dividend, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, over the long term, not over the uh, short term. So I do think that there will be more flexibility when it comes to fiscal policy without um, uh, ignoring the fact that in a currency union, you need some sort of fiscal alignment. Well, and I am very confident that if I speak for my country, Greece, come 2023, we will produce primary surpluses. We have a high, we have a high debt, uh, we need to service. Uh, but it has relatively low repayment obligations for the next uh, 12 years. Right. But I want to make sure that whatever we do is fiscally uh, sustainable. Yeah. Uh, no, because, I mean, it's, it's, you know, the euro is okay, but it's not finished. The single market's not finished. The banking union is not finished. Yeah. It, it's, like it's, it's like a building where the foundations are there, but some Not of just the, the foundations. I think, I think, I think, I think, some of the structures missing. Yeah, but, but, I, but I do think that the recovery fund was a, was a milestone. Um, yes. You know, because this could be, this could become a permanent tool. In order for it to become a permanent tool, we, the member states, have to prove that we will make good use yes. of the funds. Do you uh, think the Commission's capable of ensuring that? Um, uh, I think so. Uh, uh, I'm the, not. <laughs> uh, no, I do think so. Uh, they, have, they have made a very good job at scrutinizing the plans that we have uh, submitted. They're in line with the country-specific recommendations, so they do focus on real reforms. I'm very proud of our plan. Uh, and they th um, praise your plan. Uh, our plan has been praised. It was put together by Greeks, for Greeks, in particular for the young generation, mm -hmm. because the biggest inequality today uh, is not income inequality, it's a generational inequality. It's young people feeling that they will live worse than their parents, and this is of primary concern to me. We are basically out of time, but I'd want to thank you for being patient with my interruptions, um, for uh, speaking so openly, and um, I wish 
you luck with all the challenges ahead, because they are many, and not just generational, but um, financial, lots of other ways. So um, thank you, Mr. Prime Minister, thank you. very, very much. Thank you very much.